bringing hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in Word with Pastor Mensah Otterbill. And now, today's word. Well, uh, I was dealing with uh, God has spoken, and I didn't complete the series on God has spoken. I have two more parts to complete, so between today and next week, I will be concluding my series on God has spoken. So today is going to be part four in the series, God has spoken spoken and our subtitle is illumination illumination god has spoken illumination in the first part we looked at revelation we looked at and the revelation general revelation and special revelation and then we looked at inspiration how god inspired his word and then the third part we looked at interpretation the tools to use to interpret God's word. And today we're looking at the fourth part, illumination. And next week we would look at application, how to apply the word of God. So let's start with some definition of the word illumination. Illumination. Illumination is the process by which the Holy Spirit opens the scriptures to our understanding the process by which the holy spirit opens the scriptures to our understanding illumination and interpretation go hand in hand they are two sides of the same coin or they're like twins you cannot have proper interpretation without illumination and you cannot have illumination without interpretation you need both at every time working together to properly appreciate scripture we need to rightly divide the word of truth and also be guided into all truth by the Holy Spirit and so uh, when, when we interpret the scripture, we properly understand the words and what they mean, and that we've talked about how to do that. However, if we stop there, we're just interpreting the scripture using the tools of interpretation, we may just end up with an academic understanding of the word of God. We have to have something more than the academic understanding. We need to have the Holy Spirit breathing life into the word. And that's where illumination comes in. But the two must always go together, although they are not the same. So the word of God must be interpreted and we must allow the Holy Spirit to illuminate our minds when we read the word of God. The difference between illumination and interpretation is like reading about something for a very long time. Maybe you are a student of, uh, of geography and you've learned about Mount Everest or Mount Kilimanjaro or you've learned about um, the River Nile or Niger or some, some geographical feature. And you've been a great student of it for so long. And then one day, you visit the place and really see that geographical feature. When you see it, your understanding deepens. But the reality does not contradict what you studied. You, you, you are not going to find that what you saw is very opposite what you were learning. You are going to only find that what you were learning was actually real. You saw Mount Kilimanjaro, you saw Mount Everest, or you read about snow for a long time and you touch snow for the first time. The two experiences are together. Or maybe you watch a football match on television. Uh, maybe you watch your favorite team 
And, and, and you watch them on TV, or maybe if you follow the English Premier League, you watch one of those fanciful teams in, in England, or one of those in Germany or, or Spain. And, and you watch them on TV, you know them, and then one day you go to the stadium and watch them, and you're going to realize that going to the stadium is not the same as watching TV. But the two will not contradict each other. It's only going to be that the reality of going to the stadium deepens your understanding of what you are watching on TV. So that's the difference between interpretation and illumination. It gives you, interpretation gives you an understanding, but illumination takes it further. All right. Now, let's look at an example of illumination. An example of it in the Bible. Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 25 to 32. It's an encounter Jesus Christ had with two of his disciples after his resurrection. And here we're going to see interpretation and illumination working together. Now these two disciples of Jesus knew the scriptures. They knew Jesus, the, the Savior was supposed to die. They knew he was supposed to resurrect. They, they could interpret the scripture. But then they had the reality dawn on them in a very deep way. And, 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 and this is how it happens. Then the Bible says, then he said to them, O foolish ones, as Jesus tells you, you are foolish, it's not good. Uh, he said to them, all oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the scriptures, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. I want you to note, he expounded it from the scripture. He didn't pick it from his head. He picked it from the scripture. Verse 28. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. Then they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? They knew the scriptures. But at this point when Jesus opened the scriptures to us, the Bible says their eyes were open and their hearts burned within them. That is what illumination of the scripture would do to you. It would take what you know to a level where your eyes are open and your spirit or your heart is burning inside you. So I'm going to give you five things that illumination would do. Illumination is number one, when the word becomes clear to us. It is as if a veil has been taken from your eyes, the scales from fall off, and everything becomes clear. You read a Bible verse, and it's no longer confusing. It's so clear to you. When you get to that point, it's not just the verses or the words. It's the Holy Spirit bringing clarity to you. Illumination is when the word becomes clear to us. Secondly, illumination is when the word becomes alive to us. That's when the word becomes flesh. The word becomes real. Our senses are awakened by the Holy Spirit to feel the word, to touch the word. It's almost as if you, you can eat the word of God. The Bible becomes so real to you. When you get to that point, it's not just the verses speaking to you. It's the Holy Spirit activating your senses. The word becomes alive. That's what the two disciples were saying. The word became alive to us. Third, illumination is when the word speaks directly to us. That is when you can personally identify with the Word of God. It's no longer God speaking to the world. It is God speaking to you. And you have a direct connection to the Word. The Word becomes clear. The Word comes alive. And the Word is speaking directly 
to you. Fourth, illumination is when the word sinks deep in us. It is when the word touches the core of your being. The word touches you so much, sometimes it becomes almost like an emotional experience. You have a deep emotional awakening with the word of God. And sometimes when that happens, you see people may cry as they read the word of God because now it's speaking to you so deeply, tears are falling down your face because God has made his word real to you. And sometimes as you read the word, it, you just burst out laughing. You're just excited. The joy of the Lord fills your heart. Sometimes you read the word and you shout just by yourself in your room and you say, wow. Because something has dawned on you. Sometimes people just read the word of God and get up and start running around because it's almost as if something has kicked you on the inside of you. It's not just words speaking to you. It is the Holy Spirit now illuminating the word of God to you. Now, when you have that experience, you have to learn to respond. When the Holy Spirit is bringing tears to your eyes, don't squeeze your face too hard. Allow the Holy Spirit to flow through you because you are receiving illumination. There are people who are very unemotional. Very unemotional. No matter how the Holy Spirit moves them, they remain very stiff. It's good to be very composed, but you must know when you release emotion. It's, it's almost like when you go to, to the stadium and you're and, and your, your favorite team <laughs> facing relegation is playing and they are in a draw and they need to win that team to qualify, to get out of relegation and all of a sudden at the last minute, extra time, 90, 93rd minute, they score a goal. Now you can't just be in the stadium and say, go. That was a goal, a beautiful goal. No matter how composed you are, you, something's going to well within you and you're going to express yourself emotionally. You're going to shout, you're going to scream, you're going to get up and sometimes do something more crazier than that. Now, now if we can do that to a football match, how much more the Word of God when, when the Spirit illuminates the Word of God and it touches you deeply, you have to respond emotionally. You have to respond emotionally. And it may not just be in church. It may be at home. It may be you just having your daily devotion or having your quiet time reading the Bible and all of a sudden, something just hits you at the core. You know, God just spoke to me by His Word. Illumination has come. And you respond either with the joy of the Lord with shouting running around crying number five illumination is when the word inspires obedience in us this is when you become a doer of the word you cannot have illumination and not do something you don't need anyone to encourage you when when the scriptures are illuminated in your spirit you act. You just do what, what the scripture says. All of a sudden, you know you must obey the word of God. It's not doing it because Christians have to do something or the church is looking out for you. You're doing it because you have received illumination. When we receive illumination, the word becomes clear to us. The word comes alive to us. The word speaks directly to us. The word sinks deep into us. And the word inspires obedience in us. Psalm 36 verse 9 says, For with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. So what are the sources of illumination? Where do we get it from? Where do we get it from? We're going to look, to, look at two passages. John chapter 16, verse 12 to 14. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. John 16, 12 to 14. 1 Corinthians 2, 11 to 12. 
in John 16 Jesus speaks these words to his disciples and I have touched on this passage uh, earlier on in other messages I've preached this year but it's appropriate also for illumination John 16 12 to 14 I still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now however when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak of his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you things to come he will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you he the spirit of truth the spirit of truth there is the Holy Spirit then first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 and 12 first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 and 12 and he reads for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God for we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God now if you look at these scriptures and many other scriptures it tells you that the Spirit of God is the illuminator of God's Word the Spirit of God is the illuminator of God's Word he is the one who throws light on the Word of God he's the one who makes the word clear to us he's the one who touch who makes the word touch us deep within us he's the illuminator he works with us as we study the scriptures and gently opens the word to us as we go along he takes the word and brings it to life he takes the word and makes it clear he takes the word and let it speak to us directly he takes the word and allows it to touch us very deeply the Holy Spirit does it interpretation is done by us illumination is done by the Holy Spirit interpretation is when I go to the scripture and use all the tools available to understand the scripture that's my job illumination is when the Holy Spirit takes what I am doing to a different level where he brings real meaning to the Word of God so if I don't interpret well I would not receive illumination I cannot receive illumination without proper interpretation of the Word of God the two must go hand in hand when Jesus illuminated the word to his two disciples on the road to Emmaus he used interpretation and allowed illumination to come through it you cannot just jump to say I've got an illumination and as most charismatics will put it I have a revelation technically you you can't have a revelation because revelation comes from God that is what we call the Bible so most time when people say I just received a revelation from God they mean I, I got illuminated when people say I just got this word from God I just got a revelation I know they didn't get a revelation but I wouldn't correct them because you know that's what they think but the proper thing is that they got illuminated they got illuminated the revelation has already been given it's called the Bible but then the Holy Spirit illuminates the revelation to us and helps us to properly understand the revelation. Thank you for listening to Living Word. To interact with Pastor Mensah Otebe, like his page on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter at Mensa Otterville. Email Otterville at centralgospel.com or call plus 233-302-688-000.